you are already working. You are already working in our midst. Thank you for what has just happened right now. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. Now take us into your word. Bring us light. Open the eyes of our understanding. And all our brothers and sisters that are watching us from the comfort of their home from whatever country, let the light of your word enter into them. That Jesus will be glorified. Thank you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory be to Jesus. So like I said, I'm just going to run through this very quickly. And then we'll be out of here. And then go with it. And we're going to continue on the next week. Now let me start by saying this. Our understanding in Christ and concerning what Christ has done is very, very, very imperative when it comes to receiving your blessings. You understand? Our understanding, that is why the Bible says in all thy getting, get understanding. Jesus spoke to the multitude and the Bible says, and they left. And then the disciples went to him and said, why do you always speak to them in parables? He said, so that they will hear, but they will not understand. For if they understand, then I have to do them. Once they get understanding, I have to perform. Because God is not a man that he should lie. So once the revelation of what God says dawns on you, and you receive it and obey, God has no choice, so to speak. He has to honor his word. Because he is not a man that he should lie. And so understanding is very, very, very crucial. And the only one that can give us understanding is the Holy Spirit. You can learn and learn and learn until the Holy Ghost opens you up to the mysteries of the world. You are only reading letters. You remember what our Lord Jesus said? The letter kill it, but the Spirit gives life. The words that I speak, they are life and they are spirit. So it is the spirit of the word that opens us up to the revelation. Precious one, listen to me. The Bible is not an ordinary book. The Bible is the breath of God. It is the infallible word of God. The Bible speaks. There is a spirit behind the Bible. There is a spirit. If you will dedicate yourself to learning the Bible, allowing the Holy Ghost to take you through the pages, you will hear the voice of the Word of God. The Bible speaks. Have this understanding. Never approach the Bible like any other book. The Bible is not any other book. It was not written by men. The Holy Ghost used men to put it together. But the content did not come from man. It is God. You understand? That is why we can read, we can write from the beginning. Uh, um, you know, uh, 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 Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without God. And then God came and said, let there be light. What man was standing there? Who saw that? So if it is man writing the book, how could man write what he did not witness? Or what he did not even know? It was written by Moses, right? Was Moses born at that time? Not even Adam could write it. You understand? But the Holy Ghost inspired Moses and opened him up to the revelation of what happened in the beginning. And he began to write. So don't let anybody make you think the Bible is just any book and it can be treated as any book. That is satanic move. You understand? The Bible, all, all that the devil is trying to do is to discredit the Bible. The only book, if I should use that word, book, the only book the devil is afraid of and has problem with is the Holy Bible. 66 books. The one written by the Holy Ghost. This is the oh how the devil wished he could burn the, all the Bibles in the world. Apart from the Bible, the devil does not care about any other religious books. And some of the religious books, it was written by the devil himself. The only book that has authority over the devil is the word of God, the Bible. 
the one made of 66 books and I'm, I'm being specific about it because today we have all kinds of Bibles introduced in the world by the devil because he's doing all he can to confuse people to discredit the Bible so now he's introducing all kinds of Bibles with um, all kinds of things in it but you see the devil is a stupid defeated enemy he is so stupid he can't learn you understand with all that Jesus has done to him eh? the devil, if the devil was a Ghanaian I would say he's a gun he's on the ground he said you wait when I get up okay what if you don't get up you are the <laughs> <laughs> you see, so let that that is why it is important for you to position yourself for God to use your life to prove His word. Because many people are confused out there. You understand? And, and I don't have time to go into that, but, but I know one day I'm going to touch on it for you to know why we are having all kinds of prophets, teachers, pastors, uh, all kinds of churches going on. You don't hear that among Islam. You don't hear that among Buddhists. You don't hear that among uh, all the courts. But when it comes to the church, all kinds of pastors, all kinds of prophets, all kinds of teachers, all kinds of churches. Why? The devil is so desperate that he's, he's creating a lot of things around the church to confuse people. So today, there are many so-called churches that has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. But the world looks at them as church and they see all kinds of disgusting things going on and then they stereotype it and say, look at the church of today. Please hear me, that is not the church of our Lord Jesus. All kinds of prophets, all kinds of teachers doing disgusting things to people and then you hear the, the general statement, today pastors, today prophet, nowadays the, the apostles, this is how they are. The devil is trying to tarnish and assassinate the character of the true servants of God. And so he has introduced or ordained many of such people and they are doing all kinds of disgusting things. And the world does not know how to draw the line of demarcation between the genuine ones and the fake ones. So they stereotype it. This is how today pastors behave. It's a lie from the pit of hell. Those are not of God. It is so important. But you see, that is just by the way, that's not what I'm catching on right now. But quickly, let me say this. If, yeah, let me use David as an example. Now, God forbid, I'm just saying, let's say Brother David is broke. You know, he can't be broke. He's one of the wealthiest men in the world. Amen. Let's say he's broke and he's hungry and he wants food to eat, but he doesn't have the purchasing power. And so I decide to help him. And then I go and purchase a food. Let's say the food cost me $10,000. Because I wanted him to eat well and eat forever. So it's, it's really loaded. Every nutrient in the world is in it. $10,000. And then I called Brother David and I said, okay, this is it. Don't worry anymore. I've solved your problem. Let's say I purchased the food from maybe McDonald's or Wendy's or Chipotle so I have ordered this package of food it cost me 10,000 I have paid for it don't worry about the cost all you are going to have to do is to call them and pay for the delivery now it cost me $10,000 and the delivery is $15 and so brother David now calls Chipotle and he said, my name is David and there is an order made in my name and so I want to pay for the dispatch to bring it to me. 
They check it, they say, yes, try to purchase it, but it is for you, your name is on it. And so once you pay your $15, it is coming. So he paid the money and the food is delivered to his house. Then after he is filled, he has eaten and is filled, he goes out there and started bragging. Oh, you, you are poor, that's why you can't eat, you don't have food there. Oh, me, I'm blessed with her. I ate $10,000 meal. The meal I bought, 10000 Now, li listen to the language I'm speaking. The meal I bought, 10000 meal, did he buy it? The meal I bought, 10000 And the purpose for which I did that, is that I'm in a position to help many people. So I did it for him, so that he would go and tell everybody that is hungry. And then they will call upon me, and I will play the same order for them. And all they will have to do is to pay for the delivery. Amen. Amen. Now do you, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the Holy Ghost of him understanding to something. The problem with many people in the church is that we are behaving as if we are paying the price for something. For that Jesus has paid the ultimate price. And so the wrong concept, the misunderstanding is what makes us pray, fast, pay tight, give, serve, and it's like like it is happening. Because if I'm praying and fasting, what do we say? I'm paying the price for the anointing. You are a book. You can never pay the price for anointing. Do you know what it means? If I'm giving my tithe, my mind is that I'm giving, I'm paying my price for prosperity. Precious one, you can never pay the price for prosperity. You understand? Everything we must understand. Jesus paid. Yes, there is a price we have to pay. But the only price we have to pay is the price of delivery. Jesus has paid the ultimate price for everything. All you and I have to do is to pay the price for the delivery. It is already purchased for us, but we need it to be delivered. That is where the issue is. And because our time is up, I'm not going to go into that, but I'm, I promise you I'm going to take you through the process. You understand? That is the only price we are paying. The price for the delivery of the package <coughs> that has been paid for me already by my Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not paying the price for anything. When I stand before God in prayer and fasting, the price for the anointing is paid by my Lord. I'm only paying the price for the delivery of the anointing of all my life. When I'm paying my tithes and offering, when I'm giving, I'm not paying the price for prosperity. It has already been purchased. It became poor that I might be rich. I'm only paying the price for the delivery. And we are going to go to how we pay the price for delivery. I'm only paying the price, but the mindset is the problem. The understanding. That is why I started by saying that in Christ, your understanding is very, very imperative when it comes to you receiving your blessings. Very, very imperative. We cannot pay the price for the creation of anything. We only pay the price for the delivery of that which has already been purchased for us. Don't forget that. So that when you understand these things, then you will know that, you see, it is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. 
It is patience for everyone in the world. That is why it is foolishness to look down upon anybody because of their social status. Because what is patience for you is patience for them. The only difference between you and them is that they have not come into that knowledge and they haven't come to understand how to take the delivery of that which is patience for them. That's the only difference. But it is patience for everyone. Nobody is at disadvantage. It is so important. It is so, so, so important. And so, what has been purchased for us? Number one, you must believe in it. So, faith is crucial here. And then you must obey the principle for the delivery. So, it is, you know, the only price we pay, you know, is the price of faith and obedience that coordinates the delivery of what Jesus has paid for us. So important. And so, if God is asking you to serve me with your substance, that, that is the price for the delivery. You understand? The, the prosperity is already purchased by the blood of our Lord Jesus. It is already purchased. We are not paying the price for the creation of anything. Every, the price is paid already. But we need it to be delivered. So that is why the devil fights. That is where he fights. Now, for instance, when I purchased the food for David, and David paid for the delivery, let's say they gave it to an Uber driver, and between the purchasing point and his house, let's say 15 miles, so the delivery driver hit the highway he's going, and then somebody crosses him. And stop you. You see the devil at work. That that is where prayer comes in. You understand? So it is you you pay the price for the delivery, but then you need forces to bring it. Forces because there could be disturbances on the way as they are delivering your package. You know. So we have to understand that. Um, we, Jesus, our Lord, has paid the price already. If I fast and I pray, and I, 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 I'm praying that multitudes will come to church, like the way multitudes have come this morning, multitudes will come, and I come and minister, and after that I make an altar call, and you see, Thousands of people running forward, and I'm like, wow, because I fasted and I prayed. See what is happening. <laughs> That's a joke. Jesus has already paid the price for their salvation. I only position myself for their delivery. That is all. That is why at the end of the day, all glory goes to Him. Precious one, it is dangerous to take glory in anything. That is why I said earlier how smart David was. The Bible says, and David smote all the people. After that, he said, The Lord has brought me victory and has defeated my enemy before me. Meanwhile, physically speaking, he was the one killing them. All glory goes to him. When I minister or I pray for people, you see, this, this mindset is what is making people kill themselves so, with all kinds of fasting. Fasting and prayer is good, it's our food. We believe in it, we fast, we pray. But this attitude of, you know, uh, Brother David brought a sick person today. He should carry me fast. So if I pray, then we will be here. You bring in the suit because this week I'm going to fast. And when I fast, you know, I'm paying the price for the anointing. And then when the anointing comes, bring him. Wrong concept. You understand? When he breaks that person, whether I have fasted or not, by faith, I know Jesus has already paid for the healing. All I have to do is to exercise my faith for the delivery for you. That is all. That is all. That is all. 
You understand? Prayer and fasting is, you know, empowers us to position ourselves and to work in the principle for our delivery. That is it. But your prayer and fasting is not what is going to purchase anything because you cannot pay the price for salvation. Can you pay the price for your salvation? In the Old Testament, they tried it with the blood of cows and sheep and all those things. It only pacified their sin. It never removed the sin. That is why God, God is merciful. They will come, go to the temple, the priest will do everything, the blood will be sprinkled, go to the Holy Souls, Holy, come out, God has accepted, He has forgiven you. The following day, they do worse. Well, because they know, oh, at the end of the month, we are going to, you know, all you need to eat, just get two dolls and sheep and commit anything you want. So they tried it. It did not work. But glory be to our Lord Jesus. He came with the blood without blemish. Sacrifice, pay the price for our salvation. You understand? So the price Everything, the price is paid. Everything, the price is paid. Everything. When you understand this thing, please, please, you'll be very sensitive spiritually. When somebody tells you, if you want a miracle, bring 2,000, bring 5,000 before the miracle, you'll be very sensitive. Now, that is not to say God cannot ask you to show some particular thing. God can do that. But when it becomes a template, where it's like, until you do that, please watch those people. Watch them carefully. Beware of them. My Lord has paid the price. Everything, the price is paid. I'm not going to, I can, it's not like I'm not going to, I cannot pay the price for anything. I can't pay the price for creation. I cannot. I cannot. That is why if we could do it, Jesus wouldn't have come to do it. He came and he did it. All we need to do is to position for the delivery. The price to pay for the delivery. The price to pay for the delivery. There is a price to pay, yes, but it is not for the creation. You are not paying for the product. The product is already paid for you. You are paying for the delivery of it. Amen. Amen. If Jesus did not pay the price and God told you, okay, Fred, you want to come to heaven, you have to pay the price for it. <laughs> you will tell God, forget it. You understand? For, forget it. Because all the blood in you will not even pay one tenth of the debt that you owe. Amen. Amen. He alone could pay the price. That is why all glory be unto him. That is why he's the only one that can boldly declare publicly, I'm the way, I'm the life, and I'm the truth. Because he only paid the price for humanity. No religion. Now, let any religious leader come out and make that declaration. He said, I lay my life down for you and I pick it up after the third day. Let anyone who claims he is of God come and make that statement publicly and see what God will make happen. You understand? He only paid. That is why with all the religions in the world that you know, Everybody claims, yeah, hey, our leader is this, our... I told somebody, I said, yes, I mean, hey, God has given us the freedom. You can create your own God. That's up to you. But there are some statements God will never permit anyone to say apart from Christ. There are some statements. God will never permit anyone apart from Christ. He said, I am the door. I am the door. You don't go through me, you are a thief. Let any spiritual leader say it. He said, I am the way, I am the life, and I am the truth. Anyone who does not accept me can never 
go to the father. Let any leader say that. He said, I give you my blood. Anyone that does not drink my blood and eat my flesh has no life. Can anybody make this statement? No way. Except the one who truly laid his life down and on the third day rose victoriously and paid the price for us. Glory be to Jesus. You paid the debt you did not owe. I own a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. Now I can sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Lord Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. He only paid my debt. He purchased the product for me. Precious one, your glorious life has been paid for. Your good health has been paid for. Your financial fortune has been paid for. Your long life has been paid for. Your glory on earth has been paid for. Take delivery. Take delivery. Take delivery. You are not paying the price for the product. You are only paying the price for the delivery. He only allows us to pay the price because God wants us to coordinate with him. He wants us to cooperate with him. He wants us to be responsible. If I'm lying on my bed and it arrives, I may not even value it because I did nothing about it. So we're just going to concern ourselves with how to take delivery. You know, the other time, uh, the King Fred said here that some people go to heaven and go to tell them you see all these blessings, you are supposed to enjoy it. That will never be us. All the blessings that God has prepared for me, I will so finish it. God will even have to add more to it before I will go. Otherwise, when he calls, he finds that no, 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 bring more. You understand? You must be I am not going to go to heaven and even see a pin and God will say, you were supposed to enjoy it on I, I will utilize everything. I will make God know that I'm greedy for blessings. And the blessings, I want it because of his agenda to bring glory to my Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. It is so important. How to take delivery? How to take delivery? That is where the devil disturbs. From the point of purchase to your house, or let's say to your life, in between, that's where the disturbances are. And, but when we lift up our voices in prayer, <laughs> angels are dispatched and they flow with the delivery uh, item to make sure it, it reaches us. You, you will receive your delivery. Amen. This week, you will receive your delivery. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. it is so important that we understand it this way. Also, let it be in your mind, no matter the challenge you are facing, no matter what is going on, precious one, good life is purchased for you. And you are going to take delivery of it Amen. to bring glory to the name of our Lord Jesus. You understand? Jesus has purchased the price. Now, you see, we did not just get born again wait and suffer here and there, by and by we go to heaven. You know, there are some songs we think, we call the gospel saints, the songs, I don't agree with it. You know, that song that, uh, what, by and by, when we go to heaven, there will be no more tears. That means here we have to shed tears. And then when we go to heaven, there will be no That, I, I refuse it with all my heart. You understand? Mm -hmm. 
we, we will manifest heaven on earth. Say amen. amen. That's right. That's right. And so, like I said earlier, let's just make up our mind and let us be willing to be committed, to be dedicated, to serve, and, and to do everything that brings glory to Him, especially in the area of soul winning. Let us just do that, and before you know it, your, your, your package is arriving. Your package is arriving. Your package is... Do you know how the angels are busy because of us? Your package is arriving. Your package is arriving. Your package is arriving. And because of lack of knowledge, some people are so bullied by some so-called servants of God. When I see it, my heart start jumping. Making some people think that until you encounter me, you will, you will see God. You think we are in the Old Testament? Even in the Old Testament, the high priest did not say that. But some people, some so-called men of God of today, bully people, intimidate them, and give them the impression until you until I pray for you, God will never answer you. They make you feel like you can pray to God direct. It has to be through them. All those things are satanic moves. And hear me. And all those that are watching me on your silver screen, anyone that calls himself a servant of God and does not deliver a message to you that directs you to Jesus Christ, move away from that person. Because all said and done, at the end of it all, it is Jesus. It is Jesus. It is the cross. It is the cross. So when you are fasting and praying, look at the cross. You understand? That's where the price was paid. The product that you want, that, that is, that is the, a sign and evidence of the price. And so you're looking at the cross and, Father, thank you. The price was paid. I'm just coming for my delivery. If I stand and minister and the Holy Ghost move on people and signs and wonders are happening and multitudes are coming to Christ, it is because I'm looking at the cross. It is not me that is standing here. God can use anyone to do. I'm just privileged and blessed and graced to be used by Him. I cannot bring one person to Christ. The Bible says nobody comes unto Him unless He calls. Who calls? Is it you? You understand? We should understand this thing so we can walk in the spirit of humility. Because God is going to use us to do greater and mightier things. And this is important for you to understand. So it does not make you raise your shoulders as if you are doing it in the energy of the flesh. When I preach, I minister, and wonders are happening, and people go like, Hey, man, Pastor Trowey, I'm going to my daughter, you talk, I'm going to watch. I mean, yes, in that sense, you are not wrong, God has anointed me. But, you see, what is happening is because the price was paid for it. The anointing is just for the delivery of it. But the price is paid. So whatever is happening, is happening because Jesus our Lord paid the price. That is why it is happening. Not because I'm anointed. Now if you are anointed and the price was not paid, what would the anointing do? You understand? Elijah was anointed. Was he able to save anybody? Could he bring anybody to salvation? Because the price had not been paid at that time. So it is important for us to anything God does in your life because God is going to do a lot of awesome, wonderful things in your life. Financially, God is going to break you through. He's going to connect you. When all these things begin to speak, please understand, it is happening not because you are eloquent. You know how to talk to people. Not because you have necessarily speaking a connection. Not, not because of your education. But it is happening because Jesus paid. 
price. The product has been paid for me. I'm only paying for the delivery. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt you pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the skies. Lord, I lift your name on high. He alone paid the price. He alone purchased the product. And we have accepted the price he paid for us. So we have come for our delivery. And it will be delivered unto us. Because he paid the price for us. He bought a product he did not need. It is for us. We need it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Shall we stand up to our feet? Glory be to Jesus. And our brothers and sisters watching me from the comfort of your home, from whatever country. You heard me say, Jesus is the only way, the only life, and the only truth. If you haven't accepted Jesus, whatever you are following is a lie, it's deception. And so today the word of God has come to you. Jesus is the only one that pitches your glory for you. So you want to accept him so you can take delivery of what he has pitched for you. All you are going to have to do is to accept him into your life. And so you want to do that, just pray this prayer with me with all your heart. Thank you, Father, for today. Thank you for your word that has come to me. Father, today I believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again and he pitches my salvation. Today I come to you as a sinner. I ask you to forgive me all my sins. Today, with all my heart, with all my way, I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you, Father, that I'm born again. Thank you that I'm now a member of your kingdom. I receive grace to walk with you to the very end. In the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you for these precious ones. We celebrate their salvation with heaven. And we ask that, Lord, your grace and your hand will be with them. Father, we pray that wherever they are, you will plant them under your servants, that you will use to raise them, so that at the end of it all, everything about them will bring glory to our Lord Jesus. Every finger of the enemy against them, whatever the devil has done in their life before now, by the blood of Jesus, we nullify it. We destroy it. We cancel it. In Jesus' name, now they are in the kingdom of the Most High. Let release your angels, O God, into their lives and let their life bring glory to our Lord Jesus. Thank you and thank you and thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Now let's lift up our hands and bless the Lord.